Hello everybody, my name is Jay and welcome back to my tech vault. And we've got our very first power supply review. Now, you know, a power supply is a power supply. So I really can't, you know, give a good enough explanation about every single little detail because honestly, there's a, a wide range of differences yet similarities in a power supply. But I'm going to go over what I think is important and uh, some of the things that I've found that are really nuisances um, when building computers. Uh, with power supplies or power supplies that have cut out in certain areas, and I'll make note of those. Um, some of those being uh, support, like support for multiple graphics cards, um, CPU uh, power sockets, I don't know if that's the right word. Um, CPU, I guess we'll just call it power sockets, um, and then our CPU power, and then also just having the uh, adequate amount of cables um, and them looking good. So I've got some comparisons here. Now, this is a 650 watt gold, um, and actually I think that's what's in the system right now. So we're gonna put that over here, but we do have a really accurate comparison. Um, and this is the OCZ, or OCZ um, Stream Pro, which is also a 600 watt power supply that is pretty much a dead on comparison of what we're looking at here. Um, and then obviously this is an Antex, Antex 1000 watt that I A is pretty thick. Um, and be uh, not really adequate for this video. So I'm going to start off by getting, just going through an unboxing, kind of talking about what we get in here, and then we'll go through and compare to kind of what this is. We'll boot them up, um, listen for like sound testing, we'll do some sound testing. Obviously this is Be Quiet, they're going to be pretty quiet, kind of in the name. Um, but we'll go over some of the other nuisances and things that I really want to make sure I take note of um, for people that may be building with this um, to make sure that they also are familiar with. So one of the things to take note of is this is an 80 plus gold rated power supply. Um, I've got to make sure that everything was in here. Um, I've actually had some unboxings where some stuff hasn't shown up. Um, but anyway, so this is what you get. You get a manual. Um, looks like this covers the, a good bit of different power supplies. So this is, I, I, power supply is a power supply. Um, so what do we got here? We have first off, we have the power supply itself. Um, it comes with, um, of course, this is semi-modular as well. Uh, so it comes, of course, with the built-in cables. Now, um, I've actually had a lot of issues in the past where companies have, A, had built-in cables that you don't need that are like, hey, you know, this isn't necessary. Um, and I feel like semi-modular should solely be, um, you know, just the cables that are pretty much required. And then everything else you can, of course, add on to um, that is not necessarily required in a very basic level build. Okay, so let's take this sucker out. So we've got, of course, a nice, um, this is actually um, plastic dipped as well, so it's nice, um, or nice paint um, cover on this. Um, honestly, everything looks good, um, high quality, no issue there. Um, I don't know if that's, that looks odd, um, but no, everything looks good here. Um, a little bit of an interesting choice on the orange, um, but that kind of goes with their theme on some of the other products that they have. So let's take a look at this. So. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I really don't actually. So what they've done here is they've made, it looks like proprietary cables. Um, so you can't get like cable mod and stuff for this. You actually have, yeah, you actually have to go through and use their individual cables. So, okay, that's that seems relatively, I mean, it's odd. Um, and unlike, you know, any of the other cables that um, or any ways that I've seen it done before. So what did they include in the, um, I guess what you call the required bundle? So we've got a power, um, or a motherboard connector, and we've got a CPU connector and, and a two by um, four, um, well, two separate four pins, but that's pretty much what you expect on, and that's a good choice there. I think that's a great um, choice on what should automatically be bundled in here. Now, as I said though, these cables don't seem to necessarily be the most highest quality. Let's actually take apart what we've got here on this bundle so we can figure it out uh, like what they've actually included in here. So uh, I obviously if you look at any other power supply that I've done, actually we'll compare the, the this was another one that's 600 watts. Um, you can see we've got the pretty much the proprietary cables. Um, we've got you know the stuff that, not the proprietary cables, but you know standard um, power supply cables that fit pretty much everything. Um, and not to mention, um, we also have additional support for, um, on this power supply, you've got uh, the additional um, eight pin CPU connector and you've got a four pin CPU connector for those motherboards that really need that extra juice. Um, so like I've actually built with systems before that only, uh, that require the eight pin and then the separate four pin in order to power the motherboard. 
and I'd actually had to you know send back the power supply. So if you're looking for something um, and maybe you're considering upgrading or something like that, this is a hindrance because it doesn't power the motherboard and you won't get your full juice out of it um, or full overclocking capabilities. Um, also, let's take a look. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is you can't use cable mods for this, or maybe cable mod does have ca uh, in special cables for it, but of course they won't be standard, and therefore maybe actually be a little bit more expensive. So another thing to keep in mind is not any cables will work with this, um, just the individual ones that they've included, which in my personal opinion don't look the best. So especially compared to some of the other cables that I've gotten in some higher-end power supplies, um, so of course something to consider. And then of course what we got, we've got some drives. We've got some more drive cables um, and more drive cables. So they've included a good bit. And then what we got here, we've got the standard um, additional PCIe um, power. And I think the, this would probably be the only time that I'd say it's probably acceptable to have a custom um, cable, of course, because I think they're drawing uh, two separate um, eight pin connectors for PCIe. So I think out of this, um, single, I guess, slot as well. So it looks like that they've kind of done something unique there. I, I could understand at least here, but for the drives, I mean, I just prefer that, you know, you have the standard um, SATA kind of option here and you just plug it in without any issues. But overall, everything looks like it goes in there fine. Um, no issues there, but compared to like the EVGA 650 watt um, power supply, uh, you know, gold rated, fully modular, I think I got that one for maybe 90 or 80 bucks, um, somewhere around there. Um, we've really got to see what this makes up for, especially because some of those cables are fully wrapped and stuff. Um, it's definitely something to consider and how this actually sounds when it's powered up. So I'm going to plug this in and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Okay, everybody. So unlike most of the stuff that I've done, um, this is going to be a little bit different. So I've got two power supplies here. I've got the um, OCZ um, power supply. It's a 600 watt power supply as well. Um, I've got uh, jumpers on both of these. Um, basically what this does is it just puts it on a completely um, non-existent load pretty much. It just uh, turns it on so we can hear what it would be like um, with absolutely no load. Now obviously I'll do another test of course where I'll go through and you know plug this into something, uh, run some benchmarks, and then of course we can go from there. So let's turn this sucker on. There we go. That one. And there's that one. Now, I'm going to move the microphone over each one um, so you can kind of hear um, what it sounds like. Literally, this is touching um, the... Uh, let me actually turn the camera this way so you can actually see what I'm doing here. So there is the microphone um, that's touching pretty much the uh, full sound of that. And uh, it's going to come over here and you can kind of hear what's going on. Um, so that's clearly uh, a difference I can definitely tell. So I'm actually going to turn this off real quick on the uh, OCZ one so you can actually hear what it sounds like. This, you don't even hear. Like, I've got to say, like, it's completely silent compared to the um, OCZ over here, which, of course, I've turned off, but um, definitely an interesting... Uh... So, welcome back. Right now I'm running a CPU benchmark on the um, non uh, quiet power supply. Um, this is actually on the system if you follow anything that I do. Um, this is a system that we did the Verge PC build on um, that actually ended up getting broken. I did get the CPU working, um, but the PCIe lane is, um, I believe something's wrong with one of the pins, and I can't get a graphics card to, uh, or get it to post with the graphics card in there. Um, so I think something's messed up there. Um, I did get to fool around and clean some of the pins, and that was able to get me at least the CPU functionality working. So with the integrated graphics, I set it up with my cables over here and stuff, and just kind of have it all laid out for you right here. So pretty much um, this is just kind of standard, um, pretty much about the same level of um, output as we did with the sound test before. I'm not going to bother you know, re-recording because there's a lot of other factors now with this fan in here. Um, but take my word for it, it's pretty much about the same. I'll go try it out on the um, Be Quiet uh, power supply and if that's good um, and perfectly silent like it is um, when we tested it earlier, uh, then we'll go through and we'll uh, kind of conclude the video. So in conclusion, a power supply dedicated to, of course, silence. And to be honest with you, while there is some slight, you know, rumbling, I believe, of the bearings in the um, cooler itself, um, honestly, or not the cooler, the fan itself, honestly, I 
it's perfectly silent. Which, obviously now I've got to move into the topic of debating whether or not it's worth it. And while 80 bucks is a good bit to pay for a power supply, especially when you can get an EVGA um, power supply, in my personal opinion, it's honestly up to preference. And I've had, you know, a video, a lot of videos where I've recently where I've done that, um, and I like to explain both sides, though. Um, first off, EVGA, um, the com common company that I buy most of my power supplies for when I do builds for people. Um, yes, I do computer builds for A, people that watch my videos, B, friends. Um, and I've got a, actually like kind of a small build business doing that. And, you know, part of the thing is I pick out the same power supply over and over again. Um, EVGA has around 80 bucks for a 650 watt power supply. And that power supply doesn't even spin its fin or fans um, up until I believe it's under 50% load. Um, don't quote me on that, but I believe up to a certain amount of load, then it starts to spin the fans. Um, so, the honest question is, you know, we've got a fan spinning here immediately when you're on, you know, no load, and you've got the fans, of course, that, you know, no, no spin at all um, with the EVGA fans. Um, honestly, it's quite an interesting situation. So this is obviously dead silent, and even when EVGA's stuff is spinning up, it's obviously got some sound. Um, and a noticeable bit of sound. I've got a front of the power supplies back there in my system, and you can definitely notice it. Um, so some of the downsides to this, of course, though, is no custom cables. You can't just, you know, go grab a cable to plug in, you know, stuff over here for a hard drive. You've got to get one of their proprietary kind of cables. Um, you know, that being said, that does make it a little bit more difficult um, for, you know, if you lose something. Obviously, it comes with, you know, a full set of everything, but it does kind of mean that cable mods and stuff are a little bit more difficult and not any generic uh, kind of cable mod will work, if that's something you really want to consider. Um, besides that, the power supply itself is, is pretty standard. Um, honestly, it's got a nice um, matte finish on it and I've got no issues there as well. Um, but compared to a, you know, the EVGA stuff that I've typically gotten, um, you're kind of losing out on that 50 uh, watts is what you'd really be losing out on. Um, and honestly, that's the only really major difference. Um, they kind of, of course, perform the same as power supply. Um, silence is something to really consider. And if you really want to, you know, dip out the 50 bucks on a power supply um, and get, you know, the EVGA power supply, I could definitely understand that as well. Honestly, what makes the most noise is, of course, graphics cards, especially blower style cards. I know I've got one. And CPU coolers. And that would also be something to consider, you know, looking into if you're interested and uh, checking those out. Um, but thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little bit review. Um, interesting. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily normally do one of these, um, but first off, it was you know they offered to send me one of these uh, to take a look at, and I was like, okay, I don't know how I'm gonna feel about doing a power supply. I'm not too sure. Um, and so I, you know, looked it over and stuff, and I'm like, well, this is obviously pretty silent compared to everything else. Um, which is obviously the unique part about um, them, which is why I kind of wanted to make this video. Um, so if you enjoyed, of course, give the video a thumbs up, and thank you, as always, for watching. Goodbye.